Perhaps the coolest of all the diagrams in mathematics is the scatter diagram because the values are scattered all over the diagram and we have to interpret what they mean. The first thing to look at when you see a scatter diagram, like this diagram of the heights and weights of a class of children, is we need to think of the correlation of the points. How are they linked? As one of these aspects, for example the height, gets more and more, what happens to the other aspect, sometimes called the variable? Does that go up as well, or does that go down? So we need to think about the correlation. Correlation. To define correlation, we could say the relationship between the variables. As one goes up, does the other go up? In the case of height and weight, we can see that as one of the variables goes up, the other variable does go up. For example, the taller students tend to have the bigger weights. In this case, we'd call the correlation positive. This would be a positive correlation. In fact, any time the points on a scatter diagram roughly go in this direction, so from naught going up and right diagonally, that is a positive correlation. Let's write that. Any time they go in that direction, that is a positive correlation. What that basically means is that as one goes up, the other goes up. Another example of that would be hard work and exam results. The more hard work you do, the better the exam results. The opposite would be negative correlation. And a negative correlation, as you can guess, is where as one variable goes up, the other variable goes down. So as one variable goes up, the other goes down. And on the diagram, we could show this in a downward sloping group of points. So if the points roughly went in this direction, you notice one of the variables going up, the other variable going down, we call that a negative correlation. In our example, as one variable went up, the other one also went up, so that would be a positive correlation. Going towards the top right, positive correlation, going towards the bottom right, negative correlation. Okay, that's correlation. What else can we do with our scatter diagram? We can also put on new values. If we're told that there was one class member not represented on this diagram that we need to fill in, we can use the grid to fill that student in. For example, if that student had a height of 120 centimeters and a weight of 50 kilograms, put him on the diagram. Well, here's 120 centimeters, and up here, then we can use a ruler and go up from 120 centimeters, and here is 50 kilograms. So the point is exactly here. Let's do that in red. What if there was another student who had a height of 110 centimeters and a weight of 42 kilograms? A slightly harder group of data to represent. What would we do then? I can tell you what you're wondering. The label only goes from 100 to 120. How would we find 110? Well, in that case, we can simply go to the middle between 110 and 120. If you're wondering what the numbers go up in, there's a method for that. But we don't need it in this case because 110 is simply in between the two values. We will need it for our next example though. There's 110 and the weight is 42. Well, now we are gonna need to know where 42 is. So what is this going up in? Here's the way to tell what the grid is going up in. You do the gap divided by the number of boxes. What do I mean the gap divided by the number of boxes? Well, the gap 
is between 40 and 50. So what is the gap? That's 10. It's going up in 10. How many boxes are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 boxes. The gap is 10, and there are 5 boxes. Often on these grids, there's only 10 boxes. But let's take 5 in this case. 10 divided by 5 is 2. That equals 2. So it's going up in 2s. In other words, we just need one more box after 40 to get to 42. So here is our other student, 110 and 42. OK, there's another skill we need to learn to complete our knowledge of scatter diagrams. And that is drawing a line of best fit. How do we draw a line of best fit? One way you might have been taught to draw a line of best fit is to count the number of points and do half and half on both sides. And that can work, but it can also sometimes be inaccurate. Say I did a line like this. Well, there might be an equal number on both sides, but it's not a good line of best fit. Here's how I draw a line of best fit. We circle all the points, like a kind of kebab, quite closely together. So we circle them, like so. And then we imagine that we have this kebab and we need to put our stick through it. And put it so that it's right through the middle so it's not going to fall off. If I was doing the kebab, I'd put the stick, let me make the size a bit bigger, I'd put the stick something like that, and then I could be sure the kebab would not fall off. And that actually works out to be a perfect line of best fit. So if we can take away the other stuff just so you can see, it would look something like this. Students sometimes ask, does the line of best fit have to go all the way from zero or all the way to the end of the grid? It doesn't. It goes from the beginning of the points to the end of the points, and that's it. There's our line of best fit. A final challenge on our scatter diagram is to estimate values. Now the thing is, we need a line of best fit to estimate values. Many students try to guess values just looking at the, um, the points, but you need a line of best fit. In fact, with a scatter diagram, you pretty much always need a line of best fit, even if they don't ask you for one. So we're going to use our line of best fit to estimate values. A student has a weight of 54 kilograms. Estimate her height. OK, there's our question. Well, first we need to go to 54 kilograms. We worked out that it's going up in twos. So we can simply go 52, 54. There it is. Then we go across. Now, here's the thing. If we didn't have a line of best fit, we wouldn't know where to stop. Because we do have a line of best fit, we know exactly where to stop. It's there. Then we go down, and then we can see what it's going up in. Here, it's somewhere between 120 and 140. How do we work out what it's going up in again? Remember that trick? Gap divided by a number of boxes. What's the gap between 120 and 140? It's 20. The gap's 20. How many boxes are there? There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So again, divided by 5. 20 divided by 5 is 4. So it's going up in 4s. In which case, this student with a weight of 54 kilograms, we can estimate, has a height of 124, 128, 132 centimetres. To recap what we've learned, if the relationships between the values is going from the bottom left to the top right, in other words, as one goes up, the other goes up, that's called a positive correlation. If as one goes up, the other goes down, that's a negative correlation. If it's all over the place, that's no correlation. With scatter diagrams, we always need a line of best fit and simply circle the points and draw it right through the middle as if it were a kebab. To work out what it's going up in, we do the gap divided by the number of boxes. And finally, when we need to estimate a value, we use our line of best fit and a ruler.